Hello YouTube, Shadow Hero 90 here. As you can already tell, I've been doing this show for about three years at this point. And in addition to the reasons as to why I do this, which I brought up last year, I am now actually going to state a few more reasons why I do this. One of which is that the, well, the portrayal of men in movies and TV is essentially toxic. And I mean really toxic. Men are... M to be honest, I can't believe that I'm the one of the only very few people who legitimately thinks that this kind of portrayal is not only toxic, but completely unfair. Second of which is the fact that these cartoons are aimed at kids and they, send, they do not send a good message. Most of the time, a lot of these shows are role model shows and the characters exist for the sole purpose to be imitated and yeah, in doing so, you send some really horrible messages. And the, f and the last possible reason I could think of is that this, well, not this, but all these shows are pushing a political agenda. I, well, to be more precise, the political agenda comes in the form of a princess character whose initials are J and B. I'm pretty sure you can figure out who I'm talking about on those initials alone. But yes, a lot of these shows, and to extension, a lot of these role model shows are pushing a political agenda and as a white heterosexual man I really don't want kids being indoctrinated because it could lead to a bad future. In fact, I really hope some really smart boy sees this show and it actually gets him thinking about sexism and it causes him not to be indoctrinated to the feminist agenda that a lot of TV shows, cartoons, and movies are pushing. Especially a certain movie that will go unnamed that used a princess character whose initials are J and B to push their political agenda. As much as this intro actually does seem like a bad rant about the negative presentation of men and boys in the media. This is completely serious and these three reasons I gave for doing the show are actual reasons. Now that being said, if you agree with me on this, that's good. So just Sit back and enjoy the review. Okay, in this episode of Sexism in Movies and TV, we're going to be doing a new segment called Bitch Monsters. And 
this segment, I'm basically going to be reviewing the misdeeds of some horrible little brat or bitch from any film or show and show you, the viewer, what a monster she really is. Now, when it comes to female characters on TV and in film, there are a lot of bitches. Ranging from egocentric spoiled brats to egocentric man-hating feminists. So one would assume that Lisa Simpson would be the first head on the chopping block. And to be honest, she really was. Until I saw the actions of Wendy Testaberger from South Park. And therefore, I decided that she would be the first head on the metaphorical chopping block. She started out as a love interest for Stan Marsh. But as the seasons went on and we got to know her better, she became more and more of a little brat. Someone who kind of deserved to be taken down a peg. In fact, it is actually kind of upsetting that Trey and Matt don't write some episodes where this little bitch gets consequences to her actions. And I am not the only one who thinks that she went from a good character to a vile piece of trash. And with all that said, let's tear into this little brat at her worst. Okay, like Lisa Simpson, Wendy Testaberger did kind of start out as a goody two-shoes, to the best of my knowledge. But, pretty much as the seasons went on, and the audience got to know her, she just became more and more of a bitch, like Lisa Simpson. And continuing with the Wendy Testaberger, Lisa Simpson comparison, they both started out as the traditional cliched goody two-shoes little girl, but then developed, well, horrible traits. They de-evolved into unbelievable hypocrites, you know, the kind who fight for rights up until rights become inconvenient for them. Not to mention the fact that both her and Lisa Simpson delve in these twisted, brain-dead, backwards morals at a level that's over 9,000. In the episode Weight Gain 4000, she breaks into the school at night to read Cartman's essay because apparently she's so egocentric that she couldn't handle seeing him, Eric Cartman, be student of the week and this messed her up so badly that she literally had to break into the school to read his essay to make sure he actually wrote it or didn't cheat or something. Back in the first season when Wendy was actually a good character and 
and they got this substitute teacher named Miss Ellen in the first season in the episode Tom's Rhinoplasty. And all the boys get crushes on her. So what does Wendy do? She arranges to have Miss Ellen kidnapped, put into a rocket, and shot directly into the sun. And yes, this deranged Cartman level of villainy was back when Wendy Testaberger was actually a good character. Her actions in the Chrissy were 100% unneeded. And that episode itself is its own review. In the episode The Hobbit, Wendy is basically just nothing more than a bully and a complete hypocrite. Because in the episode Stupid Slutty Spoiled Whore, she went on and on asking what Paris Hilton did, where in this episode it's the exact same plot line, only that episode is the hot the episode The Hobbit done right. Not to mention the fact that um Wendy is the popular girl at school. And this kind of seems like an instance where the popular girl lost her thunder and is doing it for two reasons. One, twisted backwards moral, and two, to get her thunder back after being upstaged by a better female. The message of this episode of South Park was that Paris Hilton wasn't a good role model. Where in the episode The Hobbit, they basically say that Kim Kardashian photoshopping herself all over the internet in magazines is hurting girls' self-esteem. But then there's the fact that Fat girls in the early 2000s probably might have had low self-esteem because of Paris Hilton. Maybe there are some fat boys out there who have low self-esteem because they don't look like, oh, say, Tom Brady. You get my point. This is completely hypocritical. No one likes a hypocrite. South Park kind of did make their opinion known in the episode Stupid Slutty Spoiled Whore on this sort of topic. Not to mention, Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton are very similar. Take Kim Kardashian out of the equation and Paris Hilton would probably be where Kim Kardashian is now and would have ended up making a third appearance on South Park. She'd probably be the focus of The Hobbit as opposed to Kim Kardashian. Wendy's actions in the episode The Hobbit were 100% unexcusable. She was just a bitch and a bully she treated Butters like crap for having a crush, despite the fact it's someone he would have never ended up with. But that would literally be like a childhood crush gone wrong and some boy ragging on a girl for having a crush on one of the Jonas Brothers or Justin Bieber. In the episode, The List, 
when the main characters find out the girls made a list judging them on their appearances that by the way if this was the other way around these guys would get their asses kicked Wendy gets into a fight with her best friend over shoes and her best friend here almost shot her. And you know, something kind of dawned on me. Wendy Testaberger is not a good character now, but she was never a good character to begin with. And it's kind of hard, see, it, it blows my mind that people actually think this is what a good character looks like especially after everything she did in season 21. Stan is a good character. Kenny McCormick is a good character. Randy Marsh is a good character. Hell, even Eric Cartman, who is supposed to be the show's villain, actually has some redeeming qualities. He saved the town in the episode Die Hippie Die, and has fought alongside his friends against several of South Park's deranged villains that make up their rogues gallery. In short, yeah, Wendy Testaberger is a bitch. She was never a good character. I have no clue why the fandom thinks she ever was. And something that just hit me recently. You could do an alternate version of South Park where the char or all the characters are adults, but you'd have to take Wendy out of the picture. I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way, but if the characters on South Park were adults, Wendy would definitely be the town slut. And there would be an episode where she loses a bet, where she bets that she could actually go one day without jumping into bed with someone. If South Park, if the main characters were adults, Wendy would probably be where she'd have the role that Cartman's mom has on the show without being related to Cartman in any way. She dated the closest thing the show has to a protagonist. The closest thing the show has to a main villain? She dated the self-righteous douchebag who uses backwards morals to try and seem like he's a good person when he's really not. And in the episode Clubhouses, this little brat is implied to have dated tons of boys before meeting the main characters. So there's kind of a reason that the, that the main characters of this show had to be kids. Like I said, she's not a good character, and I really don't think the internet even knows what a hero's supposed to be since she has a page on Hero Wiki. In closing, Wendy Testaberger is a worthless piece of garbage, and it would almost be 
criminal, well, not criminal, but definitely a slap in the face to anyone who watches South Park, if Trey and Matt didn't actually punish her for all the fucked up shit that she's done throughout the show. People say South Park is social commentary. Have you seen any of the fucked up things that women have been doing as of late? You could easily use this character to parody that, while at the same time giving this horrible character the punishment she deserves. Okay, in this episode of Sexism in Movies and TV, I'm going to be going over the episode The Chrissy. Like I said I would in the episode last year where I tore this cunt a new one. But before I get into the review, let me just say that in summer of 2018, I had a kidney stone. And it was painful as hell, and I'm still suffering from some of the effects to a small extent. You're probably wondering what that has to do with this episode. Well, I can't really say right now what it has to do with this episode, but I will bring up what it has to do with this episode when it becomes relevant. The episode starts with our four main boys and Cartman's so-called evil inner monologue, which actually isn't as evil as you'd think it is. So anyways, after his monologue, Cartman goes to the bathroom. Normally, what Cartman does is either evil or extremely immoral. But in this instance, he just wants to go to the bathroom. But Kyle and Craig are hogging it. And this apparently is a thing that happens often, which kind of forces Cartman's hand. He even says so, that he didn't want to do this, but they kind of drove him to it. So he puts on a bow with a ponytail on it, goes into the girls' room, and says that he's transgender. And since Cartman had been planning this, he knows exactly what to say to the principal when she calls him out on faking. Mr. Garrison who was transgender at one point, knows that because of laws passed, they don't have a choice and they have to build Cartman his own personal bathroom. Wendy and the other cunts at South Park aren't really okay with this because until the bathroom is complete, Cartman is going to be using their bathroom, understandable, but because of the laws passed that Mr. Garrison brought up, it would probably be for the best that they just put up with it. Well, Cartman goes a little too far with the idea of having his own personal bathroom. Because Cartman does love his bathrooms. And this is actually where 
the episode had the potential to do something great and actually shine. It's like I said before, usually what Eric Cartman does is either evil or completely selfish and fueled by a sense of either greed or hedonism. But, in this case, his actions were coming out of a last resort. And this is where the episode truly bombs. Wendy pretty much dresses up like a boy and says she's transgender so she can have access to the transgender bathroom. And since Cartman is a straw man in this episode, he takes his rage out on Stan, telling him that he's dating a transgender and that he's a Chrissy, implying that he's potentially gay, and this screws up Stan. Forcing him to ask questions to his idiot dad about what's going on. About his feelings and if he's gay or not. What he doesn't know is, is it's, the, it's just his bitch girlfriend doing this to make an idiotic point. This is the part of the review that makes the kidney stone that I had last year actually relevant. You see... When I was having that kidney stone, before I got, I, before I was able to leave and go to the hospital, I was in a lot of pain. And my sister was hogging the bathroom. If she had not been doing that, I actually could have relieved some of the pain and my little night of torture would not have been as painful as it was if I actually had access to the decent bathroom which I did not because my sister was hogging it. In this episode, I sympathize more with Cartman's plight of not having a toilet to use than I do with Wendy trying to make a point. Going, as someone who went through a kidney stone, what Cartman's going through, at least to me, is very sympathetic. Wendy, on the other hand, is just acting like a massive cunt because she had to put up with it for a couple days. It's almost as if she can't remember all the times the boys suffered because of her jackassery. She is a terrible character. But that one scene was actually the moment where this episode could have done something right. The only change that Trey and Matt would have had to make would be have Kyle and Craig, the ones who are usually hogging it, dress up like girls, tell the principal that they're transgender, and essentially hog the transgender bathroom showing Cartman that he can't pull stunts like this to get his own personal bathroom. That hypothetical scenario is this shit fest 
done right! Oh, and in the early days of South Park, when they had the running gag of killing Kenny off every episode, Trey and Matt should start doing that to Wendy. I mean, it's basically kill either kill off the good boy who's poor and well-meaning, or the spoiled girl who is a bitch and acts like a second-rate boy. Oh, and to end this review, I'm going to say something that it might make me some enemies, but I'm going to say it. Quagmire's dad is actually better than the Chrissy because instead of just some asshole, or in this case two assholes, pretending to be transgender in order to get stuff for free, Quagmire actually ends up accepting and defending Ida, not only at the end of the episode, but in future episodes.